Hi everyone, I'm Karen Newman. Um, oh, sorry. Um, I am um, uh, I'm founder and director of BOM, which is a Birmingham Open Media. Uh, we're just over one year old uh, and we're really close to the city uh, centre. We're just by um, Birmingham New Street Station, for those of you that haven't visited yet. Uh, we're a space where curiosity-driven research with art, technology and science meets public audiences. So we're very much an R&D space, um, supporting a whole... Um, uh, a whole kind of melting pot of ideas using creative technology um, and citizen-led science and things like that. And so we work quite actively with universities but also independent um, researchers and creative practitioners. Um, so do come along and see us uh, if, if you're uh, passing by. I've got a little video that's just going to show you a little bit about Bond, just to kind of sum it up. Hopefully the sound will play. It's not playing. <coughs> some of it kind of dipping into ideas and techniques with music technology, um, a whole kind of range of stuff. So um, just chatting to Jason earlier about kind of thinking back 10 years ago as to what artists were doing with music interaction design. And so we were doing a project with Liverpool John Moores University at that time with the human computer interaction department um, and getting artists to work with technologists in the HCI departments to make interactive kind of visuals um, and projects that we would show in the gallery. And it felt like quite an exciting time um, for kind of using those kind of new um, interactive interfaces. But um, I think as Justin also pointed out, it's, it's also not a particularly new field for artists who have been experimenting with um, those kinds of creative technologies since at least the 1970s, with I guess people like Nam June Pike doing things um, over broadcast and with cellists like Charmin, Charlotte Mormon and um, things like Global Groove and really sort of tapping into precursors to the internet and connected media um, and using uh, technology in a really interesting creative way. So we did um, we did a show with David Rigby at Fact, which was really a, his first um, sort of solo retrospective, which was kind of going back to work that he was making in the 1980s, like this, called A um, uh, Very Nervous System, which is a very sort of simple um, camera vision project. <laughs> projects with people like the Biennial yeah. that were also kind of moving on and extending those ideas around camera camera vision and um, Shilpa Gupta is someone who's quite interesting, an Indian artist who, um, 
who kind of makes really poetic, participatory kind of performative works where audiences interact with their own shadows in a space and, and respond to um, the sound of music as well. But often there's a kind of political undertone with her work, which is quite interesting. So she's interested in ideas of colonialism um, and migration um, and displacement. Um, so those kind of things play out really carefully in her work. Um, yeah, she's, she's really, really great. I'm going to try not to dwell on things for too long because I know I have to kind of skip through and I've not even got to bomb yet. So, um, <coughs> So nowadays, um, I run BOM, which is a community of creative practitioners working across art, technology and science. And so we have a really diverse skill set at BOM. And BOM is really much more kind of focused on supporting the R&D processes of our fellows. So um, people like Rhea Hartley is exploring um, genetics and epigenetic inheritance. Um, Pete James is a, an early... Uh, photography historian Gemma Marmalades exploring queer politics uh, and I've, I've got a couple of slides on her in a minute. Ben Neal is using all kinds of um, creative technologies to create interactive artworks and experiences mixing music and sound and light. Laurie Ramsell is a transhumanist artist. Uh, Justin Wiggan is a sound artist who's um, working with Alzheimer's patients to uh, develop phonic maps, personalised phonic maps, which um, uh, trigger sounds for people with memory loss. So he's just at, at, the, at the point of talking to the NHS about this and trying to develop it as a as a national treatment. It's quite a big, um, uh, a big sort of uh, a, a very ambitious project. And people like Di Wiltshire at the bottom here, who is um, interested in performing with data. So she's, she's recently become, been kind of thinking beyond just um, a kind of soundscape experience, uh, you know, audience experience, and thinking about how you could actually incorporate physiological data into, um, into an audience experience. So this is a project called Sentiment, where she interviewed a lot of people about um, the very traumatic experiences in their lives, and so you experience these um, interviews, these audio interviews, by lots of different speakers um, in a circle, in a space, where this haptic device, which is kind of vest, um, and it, uh, it, it basically kind of replicates the heartbeat and sensation of the, the people residencies with us and work with the community of fellows or bring in their other collaborators, their own collaborators to make their own um, their own projects which we sometimes showcase in exhibitions and sometimes they go elsewhere around the world like Antonia Roberts just made a piece of work for MTV and the Jerwood uh, Art Space in London but this was 1-5 West who were an artist duo and it was an interactive light and sound install installation which really got people playing in the space and really great ways actually. It was presented as part of Fierce Festival of Live Arts in um, October, November time. Um, and there was a couple at one event that came just as we were locking up um, and they were really, really keen. They were on their first date and they were really keen to, they came just to see this piece of um, artwork. Um, and, and there was a party going on in the gallery so we just locked up and we said, yeah, you can go downstairs, we won't switch it off yet. Two hours later we realised that they were still in the basement playing with this thing and they were like, having the best first date I'd ever seen. They just <laughs> had a great time connecting with, with this stuff and being really playful with the sounds and, and creating little pianos and, um, and, and, and having a, a brilliant time that was really great to see. <coughs> but often our spaces are a kind of messy workspace that are kind of fusing lots of gaffer tape um, and soldering bits of things together that um, can't be kind of bought off the shelf. 
So this is one of our fellows, Gemma Marmalade, um, who is interested in um, she's interested in queer politics and why scientists are still trying to um, understand gayness and what makes someone gay. So she was performing at Birmingham Pride last year um, with a theremin and getting people to hold vegetables which were connected to a theremin. Um, and the, the vegetables, basically, the, the premise of her uh, project is, is some research from the 1970s that people who are queer are able to stimulate plants in a way that um, heterosexual people aren't. So plants <laughs> and vegetation get very excited by queer pheromones that are emitted by queer people. So we took this project to Birmingham Pride and had about 2,000 people interacting with it over the course of the day. It was uh, two days. It was absolutely bonkers. Um, and people loved it. They got really excited that the more that this theremin like squeaked and squealed, the more gay they were. It became this <laughs> enormous competition of like how how gay people were with, this, with these sounds that were transmitted. And people were left feeling really empowered by this, um, which is very interesting. And then we also um, did this performance with ankle pants. If does anyone know ankle pants? He's just incredible. Um, Probably not the kind of thing that you should show your eight-year-old at night like I did last night. Um, so he works in the special effects industry, making prosthetics and special effects masks for big blockbuster movies like the X-Men and Wolverine. And he's created his own alter ego as uh, ankle pumps, as a, a creature from the Uber Grundo. He performs with various musical devices. And um, which, which reacts to the beat and the sound of the music. And he came to perform at Bomb um, as part of Fierce Festival as well, in a, in a performance that we co commissioned with Fierce. And we got very excited and ejaculated all over everybody. But it was this incredible, um, incredibly kind of visceral performance, which at the beginning, the whole room were, were kind of really standoffish, and then people just kind of moved closer and closer to see this mask and by the end of it everyone was dancing and moving including um, um, a, an amazing um, uh, guy with autism who came to one of our first coding events um, and has been to pretty much everything we've done ever since and he was just kind of lost in this kind of moment dancing to this amazing techno music with, um, with ankle pants. It's just incredible how the, the kind of strangest things can actually uh, really inspire people and connect, connect people together. Um, two minutes, okay cool. Um, so also been working with people like Sergina, who's a drug artist making live performances um, with music over Google Hangouts. So five different performers um, singing songs across the internet in different cities at the same time um, streamed over Google Hangout and really pushing the limits of Google Hangout. Um, and we have people like Leon Trimble who's making immersive projections um, and music at Shambhala Festival and we're also creating, uh, we're looking at kind of music interaction design with, with kids and young people in lots of school visits and education things. Now this is a project that we're on the brink of commissioning at the moment, which is really exciting, with John Sear, who's an experimental computer games designer. And um, he is creating this piece of work called Sounds of the City, where different objects across the city are assigned their own um, musical, um, musical note, and that the, the project, this is just the prototype of the moment, the idea is that it would work over GPS, so as you move through the city, you come into contact with these objects that are assigned to these different um, sounds, and you get to hear the sounds of the city um, through this really um, interesting, uh, kind of beautiful um, live stream of data, I guess. And, and I think that's really nice, especially thinking about in Birmingham right now, so much demolition going on and um, you know Birmingham's not amazing at selling itself but I think this this could actually just be a really beautiful um, gesture for a city in a way of kind of re-experiencing the city um, in, a, in, a, in a really different way so I'm really excited about that one that, that would be a good one to talk to you guys about I've got a
a stop sign here, so I'm going to have to kind of wrap up. Can I just tell you before I do last slide, we've got a live performance tomorrow night with the Birmingham Ensemble for um, Electroacoustic Research, otherwise known as BEER which is taking place as part of Arts and Science Festival, and that's in the gallery at Bond tomorrow at 7pm. And it's taking a live data stream from the Large Hadron um, Particle Accelerator at Kern in Switzerland, and that's going to be re-performed as a live music performance. So please do come along for that. It is free. Thank you. really to create um, crazy projects with making making and music tech kind of interesting stuff so we do a lot of stuff actually a lot of our kids programs are inspired by them um, because I feel like bomb takes so much of my life then I may as well structure it in a way that they're gonna learn and be inspired um, from but, so yeah yeah it's, it's quite it's it's pretty full-on I, I have a head of program now which makes a real difference so there's me and head of program and um, and two assistants, uh, one gallery system and one digital content assistant who captures and makes a lot of the videos and stuff. Um, and, and yeah, really, the, the, the community of fellows has to also kind of work quite hard for BOM as well as, as working hard for the fellows. So we're, the, the, the creative community of fellows have been invested in the space, some of them way before we even opened, um, and also support um, some of the, um, you know, some of the private hires and commercial sort of stuff that we do, they facilitate that and they also feed into. So they're not only helping to create the public programmes like exhibitions and events, but they're also um, being paid to deliver workshops for schools and, um, and do creative tech consultancy with other organisations. So it's a somewhat collaborative endeavour <laughs> and an ongoing hardcore process, but it's great. And, yeah. I would be great to work with you guys. So come and say hello if, if any of that sort of um, chimes with anything that anyone's doing and you'd um, like to get in touch, it'd be really great. It's really great to be here today with a really diverse range of speakers and actually hearing lots of other um, things that are, that are chiming with me. So come and say hi. Yeah, I think we should continue the conversation in the cut break. Uh, we have 15 minutes. Uh, the coffee is right at the side, I think. Go to your left and down before.